Playing with children. Oh, the day was going on. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner Dean, and, and Jimmy and I just realized we're with children yeah. today. People in who the studio. Were born when I graduated. I know. High school. I know. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for you know. It was a good day earlier. It's, <laughs> it's like here's a little holiday That's cheer. So great now. Stick yeah. it in and twist it. You know. We are here. It is JL85. For those of you playing along at home, put that in the search box on jerrysartorama.com. It will pull up yep. the entire list of things that we're going to be showing you today. We are here with Jimmy Leslie back again. Back again. It's like by popular demand. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, I thought of this yesterday, and it was too late to get yeah. anything. I was going to see if there was an Alec Baldwin bobblehead doll. Oh yeah. And sure. present you with like oh, the Alec Baldwin award for the most yeah. times, you know, being a like co-host. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because you are the yeah. Alec Baldwin of Jerry's life. So, <laughs> so if if you've somehow like lived in a closet, I guess. And you've missed Jimmy Leslie. You're in for a treat. He is the resident artist of Liquitex, Windsor Newton, and a host yep. of other brands, yep. and the director of the Fine Art Collective. Right. And he is here to launch a new product by Liquitex. It is Liquitex acrylic gouache. Acrylic gouache. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Yeah. And and you know every and, and then to top it off. Oh, what? You guys, what sent, else? you guys sent out 500 oh, free right. samples. Yes, yes, yes. People and, have samples. And, and we apologize. Everybody got a little confused about what episode did we talk about that on. We never talked about it on an episode. Actually, I was on vacation and posted oh, okay. it, did okay. a live and told them and put the link up. Um, and then, and it was up for about five days. Okay. So, so if, if you snooze, you lose. And, and it was on uh, the Jerry's. Facebook page and just you know some people they only had 500 samples because this stuff is hot mm -hmm. and as it's hitting stores it's disappearing right. so so that was what we had to give out those of you who've joined us that have the samples uh, you guys have been posting like mad in the Jerry's Live private group all your pictures and unboxing and oh, cool. even some people being sneaky and using it ahead of time uh, I had fun you know yeah. so um, so. Jimmy's here to, yeah. to teach us what it's all about, so okay. well, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, so let, well, let's start with the, the genesis of the, the product itself. Because, so, so for me, if, if you've watched other episodes that I've been on, I've discussed that I've, I've started out as a college professor, I've always been an artist, but I was a, a college professor. So moving from the education sector to working in a corporation mm -hmm. that makes art materials, you'll, you'll learn things along the way oh, that yes. you, never, you never knew before. Yes, you do. And some of that, which I, I think might be interesting for the people out there and for you as well, um, some of this I think you know though, but being on this side of it as well, is, is how a product actually comes to be. Yes. So, so we're talking tonight about acrylic gouache. So about two and a half years ago or so, um, we started doing some market research. Mm -hmm. And basically we were asking, we, we, didn't, we didn't go out and talk about acrylic gouache. We didn't think about making acrylic gouache. What we said is to acrylic users like yourself, maybe people like you out there, we said, what are you looking for in an acrylic paint that we, we, mm -hmm. we meaning Liquitex, mm -hmm don't currently offer. And right. they said, we're looking for something that is more fluid than what you yes. currently have in soft body, which we'll, we're gonna get to new packaging quickly. I nice. Like, like the new packaging, this is our previous patch, uh, packaging of soft body. Um, they said, what are you looking for? And they said, something more fluid than this, mm -hmm. okay, but not as fluid as your ink. ink. Okay, not as fluid as your ink. So that was Brushability. One Brushability. Brushability. That was big, that was hot. Um, and there's tons of other things. Among all the things they said uh, was we're looking for something also more matte, mm -hmm. uh, very matte actually, not, not more matte, matte, dead matte. And we're looking for something that has more opacity. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, f take the, the fluid part out of it for right. a moment. Get rid of that. The matte and the opaque are hallmarks of a traditional mm -hmm. gum Arabic based gouache. And I'm saying traditional gum Arabic base. Mm -hmm. I would never say that if I was talking about gouache. I'd just say gouache and you know. Right, right. right. But I'm, not everybody knows what that means. Not everybody knows what and, that means. Or that it's even called gouache. A lot of people still exactly. call up and refer to it as everything from gooch to, to, to yeah, gouache it, and yeah, all sorts yeah, yeah. of names. And, and so gouache. Uh, gouache, like a traditional gum Arabic based gouache, right? Watercolor mm -hmm. is gum Arabic based. That's the right. binder that's making it stick to your surface. Gouache is simply an opaque watercolor. So opacity and a matte sheen are hallmarks of a traditional gum Arabic based right. gouache. So we said, we again, Liquitex said, okay, among all the things, these are a few things, matte, fluid, opaque, that mm -hmm. are standing out. That 
talks to some things that are already on the market, acrylic right. wash, and a hot trend, something that's mm -hmm. up and coming, so we said, let's shoot for that. So originally what happened, and this is what's, what's fun for me, is when I get involved early in a project and they allow me to test things, mm -hmm. uh, and then I see it come to market, I see it come to fruition. It's, it's, really, it's, like, it's like having a kid. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, 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 it's really cool. fun stuff, because you don't, you don't know early on if something is gonna go right, all, right, all right. through the stages. Right. So the, the chemists first come and they say, uh, here's, here's our first iteration of it. And we were really right. just looking at how fluid it was. And if, if uh, our soft body mm -hmm. was here, let's say, and ink was here, it was, it was too close to soft body right, and right, viscosity. Right. So I said, no, let's go back. And then it was a little bit too close over here. So now we finally met where it's, it's, it's right around there. Right. Uh, it's more fluid paint. We'll get that out in a minute. Some of you who already which, snuck. Which for other acrylic wash is not the case. It's not fluid. You do have to add a lot of water. There's yeah. a lot of dinking around with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said that too. That, that's uh, jumping ahead a bit, but it's fine. Um, you, no, no need to add water to it uh, to dilute it at all. It's ready to go. Very, very fluid mm -hmm. right from uh, right from the jar, uh, right from the bottle. So the chemist came up with that mm -hmm. first. Um, but let's let's talk about the bottle, and then I'll get into the other attributes, mm -hmm. and then we'll discuss the difference between acrylics, gouache. And then what is acrylic wash exactly? Right. But I'm going to mention the container because the black cap mm -hmm. yes. is acrylic wash. Yes. White cap is soft, soft body. body. Yep. Okay, so soft body for a second. A lot of you who are maybe uh, fans of Liquitex know that soft body came in this jar and also mm -hmm. came in tubes. No more. That's gone. You, st you still see it in stores okay. now, but probably by, I, I want to say, don't hold me to it, by March, late later March, right, right, you're right. not going to see that in stores anymore. Right. If they sell out, they're not right. going to get more in. Right. And so soft body is only going to be in this. So you can differentiate soft body aside from the writing on there. White cap, soft body. Right. Black cap, acrylic right. brush. And soft body, that's our original viscosity paint. 1955, that's our original deal. Uh, what's, what's important to note about that though, and I know we're talking about acrylic wash, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, that right. soft body, a lot of times people are under the misconception that it is a watered down version of our heavy right, body right, paint. Right. So heavy body paint is very thick from the tube, yeah. right? It, it holds that nice right. peak there, right. right? You can see it's got that drag to it. It really holds there. I can pick that up got wonderful peaks mm -hmm. to it. And people sometimes think that soft body, let me wipe that off while we're, while we're doing this, uh, they think that soft body is just a watered down version of that. Uh, not so. You can buy a, acrylic polymers out there mm -hmm. that bases that are very, very thick and gel-like right. Right. and much, much thinner. Right. So it's a, matter of, it's, it's a matter of that. Still high pigment load, still goes through all the same light fastness tests. Uh, permanence tests, ratings, uh, all that, all that good stuff that right. we put all our products through, um, still happening. But let's look at the, uh, let's look at this now. The packaging, I, I, I like this because the top comes off. Th so this is not a screw. The whole thing can unscrew, which I'll get back to in a second. This just pops off, <laughs> and then you got this uh, nozzle on here. It's already open. It's already cut. You can snip it down at different intervals. You want it to be yeah, so you want a bigger, thicker. a bigger diameter. I think I took the heat seal off of this one. I did. So let me show you this one. And remember, white soft body. This one, I don't think I took the heat. So it has a heat seal. Okay. All right. So that's on there. So you peel that off mm -hmm. to get going. I don't want to, you know, not know that and then go. Why is this not coming right, out? Right, right, right. Kind of thing. So your heat seal's on there. Um, this one. Oh, careful, the lid's not all oh, the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Only, only telling you because I've, 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 yeah, yeah, live. I'll leave so it to me. So this is it. cool. I mean, if you're somebody who wants to really just uh, squeeze that out, you can, oh, nice. right? You can do that right from, right from there. Um, and, and I did an event recently where people were playing with it like that in a very calligraphic way, or they were doing things where they were painting and then coming along and doing little sort of almost decorative. Uh huh. Dare I say, almost like cake decorating. Judge, they were, Katie. They were doing Joe Julio's. Is that is that so? He he does three little dots to finish his painting. Oh, all right. Somewhere. So so you know. Yeah. So very very calligraphic, yeah. very decorative in that sense. Um, but of course, you can obviously squeeze out a pile of the paint, and then go right, about right, painting right. normally. But the thing I like in this is that we'll get a bubble there. Uh, is that this is now flat sides all the way down, mm -hmm. right? So yes. again, this is the packaging for acrylic wash because we have the black cap, but the soft body, same thing. 
you unscrew that and flat sides right. all the way down. Why that's important to me <laughs> is, is about value. So it, in the tubes, a lot of times it's hard to get everything right, out. Right, right, right. Um, but especially so, I thought that our old jars were hard because they had these yes. little shoulders to mm -hmm. them. So to me, go go through five of these, and if you leave, you know, even that much yes, paint in each it's one, not no, it off, it's, you know, it's like then, turns into then a now mess. you have this much mm -hmm. over over every five, mm -hmm. and nobody, none of you people want to waste it, right? It's important to no. buy good materials, have quality materials. You spend the money on it, you want to get everything out of there. Right. So I like this now. You can get a pallet knife down there, scrape yeah, the whole yeah. deal off. Pound that on the table and get every last drop out of it, That's so you awesome. get you get more value that way. Um, always good. Plus, it's, I think it's very clean and modern looking. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty slick design. I think it's I think it's really this nice. This reminds you, know? you of like um, if you've ever done ceramics, the jars uh -huh. of little glazes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Very much absolutely. Like that. You know, you don't want anybody going in there and trying to you know cut off the tops with an exacto knife. You know, don't you don't need to suffer that much for your you art. Hide in my office. And yeah, you don't need to don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you, don't, yeah. you don't need to do that. <laughs> So, um, so okay, let's get back into talking about the difference between things, because I want you, if nothing else, I want you to walk away from watching this this evening to really know the difference between acrylic right. gouache and, and acrylic gouache yes, where it sits. Please. So let's, let's back up here and go with something that, that might seem a little obvious at first, but, but for the sake of explaining all three, mm -hmm. what are acrylics? Acrylics sit in the plastic family, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, something's a plastic is something that goes uh, uh, un under deformation due to, to tensile strength, compression, shearing, right? It can move, it's plastic. Right. Um, and that means there's flexibility to it. And, f and if, if, I, if I mentioned before that a gum Arabic base gouache, if the attributes of that, the ones that we know as attributes, are it being opaque right. and being matte, then the attributes that I equate with acrylics, very, very much so with acrylics, are flexibility and versatility. Yes, definitely. The reason acrylics are so awesome for people, I mean, if you're starting for the first time, you've never used any painting medium. Right. Acrylics are so awesome because they don't have the rules of, of oil painting that can be so right. tough to follow. Yes. They're, I think, more forgiving than watercolor, mm -hmm. where as you build up, since, yes. you're, since you're dealing with transparent layers, the more you build up, the right. more muddy it can get, and it right. can you're be not frustrating. Right, you're not picking up potentially layers right. you've already placed down. Right, right, and it's hard to cover up anything mm -hmm. that, that you've done, so acrylics yes. are something that's very, very versatile in that respect. So acrylics are something that flexible, mm -hmm. versatile, can be used on a ton of surfaces. They yes. like almost every surface. They don't love slick surfaces. Right? Right, right, right. But then that makes them very, very cool too because if we leave this to dry on here on a, on a slick surface mm -hmm. like this palette paper, we could peel that right off the mm -hmm. surface and we could have an acrylic sheet. Right. Um, we could bend that, we could cut it, we could sew it, we could do almost right. anything with it. And again, that lends itself to versatility. With acrylic, uh, with, with a, a traditional gouache, it can have some downsides to it but I want to be very careful because we've talked about this before. I love right. traditional gum Arabic face yes. wash. It's one of my favorite meetings. Yes. Uh, which I, you I, work in. I work most in, of my, your own in my sketchbook yeah. a lot, which I, I have here to show us something about this. So, what what's possibly a downside to a, a traditional wash? If if we look at this here, we've got a traditional wash mm -hmm. on this side, and we've got Liquitex acrylic wash on this side. And you can see here where I've gotten thick with both of these, some of this is yes. flaking right here off. Of, yeah, just lost yeah, the piece just right there. Yeah, just with that little bit of flex of the paper. But I want to be super, super careful for all of you out there watching this right now. Don't, it, it's really important. Don't look at that and think, oh, well, well Jimmy's saying that traditional uh, uh, water, watercolor right, gum right. Arabic based squash is bad at cracks. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. It, it, it has downsides if you don't know what you're doing with right, it. Right. So if you get really, really thick with it, you can have cracking. Right. With a, with a, right? But you're right. not going to have that with the acrylic wash because acrylics by nature are super, super flexible. Right. It's, it's more the, the limitations of the media and, and that you need to know it. Yes. Okay. And, and, but the same can be said of acrylics. Right. Acrylics exactly. don't like really, really cold no. temperature. No, we were discussing that earlier. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. so they can have cracking if you get really, really cold right. and right. then right. your surface flexes. Right. So that's not to say that, oh, wait, we watched Jimmy and Amy the other night and they said acrylics are, are, are no good. They, they, they crack and they're, and they're no good. We did no, not no, say no. That. We're talking about knowing the limitations right. of your materials and then what you can do with it. And that, right. that's, that's super important um, to keep that in mind. 
And the other thing that could be considered a downside of mm -hmm. uh, a traditional gum arabic based gouache, if you don't know, again, if you don't know what you're doing with it, is that um, solubility. So on this side right here, we've got a traditional gouache, right? Wet, a wet stroke laid over this blue and it's picking up that yep. color, which is why we get that dullness right there. It's mixing, right? <coughs> because a traditional <coughs> watercolor gouache, a gum arabic based gouache, remains soluble. So 10 years down the road, yes. we wet this, yep. it's gonna lift. That's not happening with our acrylics. They're water-based, they're water soluble, but when dry, permanent. Right. So I can show you that right here in my sketchbook, traditional gouache right here. Mm -hmm. And if I put my finger in some water oh, here, don't do that to your oh no, <laughs> um, you can see I'm lifting that. I'm, li I'm lifting that color. I've just smeared it right here. Now again, I don't want anybody because I I I, I love the, the the beauty of what we both do is that we get to use a lot of different mm -hmm. materials. And I love oil for certain attributes it has. Yes. I love acrylics for attributes yes. it has. And I love uh, watercolor mm -hmm. and, and gouache, uh, opaque uh, watercolor for attributes that it has. Right. So again, I don't want anybody to walk away tonight and say, oh, Jimmy said this is no good because it, it, it'll, it'll smear if you get it wet. No, actually there's things I love to do where I want to lift right. color. Right. So it's knowing right. how do I regulate that. Right. All right. So, Let's go back to the genesis of the project. You hurt my project. heart a little there when you oh. did that. Oh, that, that there. Yeah. Just, just, little, little, just you know, saying. It, it, it's well, Frida did the same it, thing. It, it, she was like, <sighs> Yeah, but you know, I mean, the beauty, I the beauty of a sketchbook is that I, I don't, I don't the consider name it too, too precious. That, that's not to say I, they're not important to me. They are. Right, right. Um, but I, I just met a, a, a kid, Devin, if he's watching. I met a kid at a cafe today. I was having lunch. Oh, cool. And he saw my sketchbook. He said, May, may I take a look? I said, Yeah. And, and, I, and he said, oh, I, I, I would like to do this. And I said, just don't be precious about your sketchbook. Just get in there, work, draw, ha have fun in the process. Anyhow, back to the genesis of the project. So once the, the chemist got the fluid nature mm -hmm. of what we wanted, then they started working on it being matte and it being opaque. So they gave me this. This is a little opacity chart. So what you're looking at here is Ultramarine blue. Mm. Um, you're looking at in our soft body, liquid mm -hmm. soft body here, and now acrylic gouache. Significant amount of 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 how uh, of opacity. Yeah. Right. And because you can see the black coming yeah. through here. So I said to the chemist when when they started doing this, I was like, oh, make it all that opaque. Right. Make it all that opaque. Uh, that's great. That's awesome. Right. And they said we can't do that. And uh, you know, I, I think as an artist, I'm like, well, you chemist right, right you, guys, yeah. you guys can do that and, and they said no no, no. We, we could do that but the thing is this is a product not meant to convert traditional gouache users into uh, into users of acrylic right. gouache it's meant for acrylic right. artists who want that matte the most right. opaque they can get and a fluid paint that's what we're looking for. But still flexible. And still flexible so they said what we're gonna do is we're gonna push opacity as much as possible mm -hmm without sacrificing flexibility. Yes. So again, trying to differentiate tonight between acrylics, right. uh, a, a traditional gum arabic based gouache and acrylic gouache, one of the things that happens with a traditional gouache is to make it opaque, you shove a lot of pigment in it. Mm -hmm. You really put a lot of pigment. Sometimes you put in an inert pigment like right. uh, calcium carbonate right, in right. there, right? Uh, right. So I'm, sorry, a, a, inert, that it, it doesn't have a color to it, it's right. white. So right. it's meant to, to help be an opacifier. Mm -hmm. The downside that we just mentioned is that if you get too thick, you can have cracking, right. you can have flexibility right. issues. So they said, here's the deal, Jimmy, if, if we're going we're gonna to make it as opaque as possible, but if we lose flexibility when every other product we make, our ink, the, the soft body, now in this jar, right. get rid of this, i gotta, I got to stay on top of my game there, now in this jar, soft body, uh, our, our, our mediums, if all of those are flexible and can mm -hmm. be mixed together, mm -hmm. and now you give me this product, and I've pushed opacity so much, but it, it can't flex and can't withstand right. experimentation and intermixability between all the products, then we just ruined it for an acrylic user who's right. going in the process right. and trying to have some fun don't want to do that. So here's the deal. You have something like our soft body color and you've got acrylic gouache and it should be able to do that. It should be able to move. Mm -hmm. It should be able to flex. I should be able to do all this to it. Roll that up. 
do that and not have a problem with flexibility. I got a little heart attack when you did when, Yeah, you yeah. should you When, should when be you able sent me the, the samples to try and I did it on a, a piece of canvas in the office from a pad, I went and showed Katie. I was like, look at this. So I took it and went, mush, 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 mush. Yeah. And she goes, ah. And I opened it up and I was like, no, it's fine. Yeah, you because, should be able to do that. Yes. That's important. It, it That's was important. crazy. Right. So this is, this is, uh, mm -hmm. Liquitex acrylic gouache over here on this side, and this is a, an, another acrylic gouache out there. And you can see right now that, right when I flex this palette paper right there, I'm, yep. I'm losing pieces right off of there, and I'm not getting the flexibility that I have there. So you should be able to have, yeah, I'm losing bits of that. You should be able to have that flexibility. That's super, super important yeah. in the whole thing. So, so once again, acrylics, just acrylic paint, acrylic paint. Our soft body here, flexible, versatile. Use it with everything. Um, great for tons and tons of surfaces. Um, a traditional gum Arabic-based gouache lends itself to smaller work. Mm -hmm. Now, part of the reason it lends itself to smaller work is, and is I'll squeeze some out here. Is if we, and you know what, I don't need to be that economical. Thank you. I use another. Um, if I take some traditional gouache right here, I'm gonna put some down. Uh, put that cap back on, and I take a brush, um, right, that's, that kind of starts to skip already mm -hmm. on, on a pretty slick surface, mm -hmm. um, because it's thick and you need to add right. some water to it. Again, not a downside of traditional gouache by any means, uh, it's part of the nature of the beast. And, and again, so you all understand the difference between all these uh, products. A traditional gum Arabic based gouache like this, um, why was it matte? Why was it designed to be opaque? Um, because often before the days of computers, mm -hmm. which is making it possible yes. for you guys to watch this tonight, before that you had designers and what did they want to do? They wanted stuff, stuff to dry fast, so it was water based, mm -hmm. awesome, water based. Um, they wanted things to be um, as opaque as possible so they could cover and work in similar ways to yes. the, the, that they would work with oil paint, mm -hmm. but they also wanted it very, very matte. Yes. And having it matte meant it was easy to photograph, it was easy to reproduce. So let's take a look again. Oh, we got it right in front of us. I had a friend whose husband was the head graphic designer for GM Motors. Oh, wow, yeah, sure. And that's in their house, all of his work, yeah. for the most part of his own work as an artist is done with, with you know, wash. Water, traditional yeah. watercolor wash. Absolutely. Because that was what he was so used to using for print because yeah. they come to him and, you know, we need this by tomorrow. Absolutely. And yeah, there can't be that reflective painting. shine. No, right. Yeah. Right. And that's maddening. Yep. That's, that's one of the reasons I, I like this uh, I like this product a lot. I like the, the acrylic wash because I'm not a, I'm not a photographer. Uh, I, 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 I don't really, I, I can admit, I don't know my way around the camera that well mm -hmm. and, and lighting like we have here right. and all that stuff. Right. I, I think today with the, with the advent of cell phones, mm -hmm. right, you know, we've got a camera in our right, pocket right, constantly right. and I think that, you know, everybody thinks, oh, well, how hard is photography? Click. But go yeah. try to photograph your work when it's got a, a really shine, big glare. Right, yeah, right across the Hard thing. to do. Yep. Right. So I love having a matte finish. But anyway, let's look at this right out of the tube. Right, the difference between that, yes. how much farther that's going to go here, you know, well, here breaking up a little too. Right. Keep, keep in mind just the, the the high water content of that right there. But a very very fluid, very very right fluid stroke that I have. Uh, yeah. Palette paper. Yeah, and even if we put uh, here, we'll go to uh, our watercolor paper here too, um, where we could use canvas. But we've got this nice slick mm -hmm. surface. It covers. I mean, that little bit. Right, that was just a little That's bit amazing. that we had on there, yep. and it's going to cover a lot. Um, so really, really nice in that respect for people who are looking for something very, very mm -hmm. fluid. Uh, and and again, yeah, just the, the the amount of what if you put soft body down, the amount of brushing that down. Yeah, so that let's that would take, take. A, let's take a look. Let's take a look at that. That's a good thing. We'll peel this off, and I'll uh, I'll move this, put this in the center here now for a moment. This piece of uh, watercolor, and we'll take a little bit of the soft body. Double check. I have the heat seal. Yeah, I do have the heat seal off there. Don't look dumb trying to get that all out. So we got um, soft body here, and I'll put uh, a little bit of that out. Um, and I'll try to put. Uh, you know what we'll do? Also, I'll take a second page here. Amy, 
hold that one just okay. a second. And I'm going to put a little bit, about the same amount here, of our acrylic gouache. And then we'll come, we'll come back here. I'm going to okay. brush this out first. So our soft body here, get a new brush. And soft body, again, covers really, really well. And, it does, but, and, and it's hard for them to see the texture that I can see kind of from the side from the light. But, but yeah, I'm, that's I'm, still I'm, I'm out, I'm very, out yeah. now, right? Yep. I'm going to clean that off. I do have the luxury of another brush, but this is good. And we can move that over to the side. Actually, since it's got blue on it, I will use the other brush so we keep the color nice and clean. So by the time I go through there, I'm getting more coverage mm -hmm. than I'm getting in this oh, yeah. whole area. Um, it, it's, it's got that ability to really just have a, it's a, almost sort of a, you know, it sounds kind of a flowery speech, but a, but a, 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 a very kind of velvety feel to oh, it. Oh no, uh, it very right much when, so. when you When you put that it out. It looks very velvety. I mean, yeah. you can already see the matte. Yeah, and we'll, we'll let that dry. We've got our, what's this guy's name back here? Uh, I don't know. He oh, I, I, don't, he had, I figured he had a name. He's got no. such a cool hat. We've named you no, we oh, haven't. All right. That's my son's hat, actually. Oh, <laughs> there you go. All right. Very cool. He's stylish. Um, yeah, we've got here. Uh, if you can, if you can see in the camera, I don't know how well you guys can see out there, but um, we've got this skateboard deck, um, which has a sort of satiny shine to it, a glossy shine to it. And then if we rotate that, yep, we've got. Up oh, oh up there more. you go. There we go. Yeah, you can see the shine on that board. Um, yeah, right the there, and if you look mm -hmm. at any anywhere where there's a shine on the board, right next to that, um, just how dead yeah. matte that surface gets. And again, I love that because I can photograph my work easily. Mm -hmm. If I want it to be glossy after the fact, I can go with a varnish. Right. I can do that. I can I can change that, but I've got this starting point. So I I find it to be a a. a a color in the Liquitex range, or I shouldn't say a color, a viscosity in the Liquitex range that's the most versatile for somebody looking for something fluid, mm -hmm. as matte as possible, and as opaque as possible. If you're starting with those points, then you can move from there and do anything else right. you want. And when I say when you're starting with those points, I think it's important to know what are the key characteristics you're trying to do yes. with your work. So yes. if somebody came, somebody, if I was a, a, a sales associate in a Jerry store and somebody came in to me and said, hey, I'm, you know, and they're standing in the, the watercolor <laughs> aisle and they're saying, I'm looking to do really <clears throat> large scale work and I need it to dry very slowly, I'd say, I, come with me, you're in the wrong aisle. Right, right, right. You're in the watercolor aisle. The, the, that's the opposite of what those attributes right. uh, are of that product. So know what you're trying to do. Ask yourself, what am I trying to do? Mm -hmm. And if you're somebody who wants to be fluid, matte, opaque, awesome. This is that starting right. point, but then you can add any other Liquitex product to it and change that. Right. See, will this stay? Will this hold? Or... Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. Good. I like that. Now, back over. is he good? Go. Yeah. yeah. He's good. Cool. So let's take a look at, uh, at the next thing uh, here, Amy. So if, if we want to, if we want to take the, uh, the product, uh, the acrylic wash, we get this matte finish mm. right here. Yeah. This is adding uh, Liquitex Gloss Gel to it. Yeah. So I can then get it to be very thick. I can get it to be very shiny mm. if oh, that's yeah. what I'm doing later on. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because look, that's the, Yeah. you can see that. Yeah, you get, yeah, there you go, you get that reflection. I mm -hmm. get a little delay there, I can't see that's my amazing. But that's amazing how, how flat and velvety that is, and just that little bit of gloss gel. Yeah, exactly. It exactly. So gloss gel right there. If I wanted to make it thicker, um, let's say I don't necessarily want to make it thicker, um, but I want to uh, add a sheen to it. This is mixed with gloss medium and varnish. Okay. Um, so again, very very matte in mm -hmm. its original state, uh, out of the bottle. And and that's again goes back to what I'm talking about. Know what you're trying to do, uh, and get the most at attributes out of your product out of the bottle first. Right. Kick, tick off the most boxes, right. uh, the most X's of, of what you're looking for, and then from there, you can always alter. Right. And that's why I say that this is a product for somebody who's an acrylic user, who's looking for another tool in, mm -hmm. their, in their toolbox, something else in their arsenal, because if you're using a traditional gum Arabic-based gouache, because it doesn't want to spread that far, right. 
you're working much more, uh, you know, uh, small scale. Right. Um, and 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 for and taking a lot longer. And taking a lot longer too. And and think about this. You know, a, a, a tube of gouache is about that big. Yes. Right. So if I'm traveling, I like I'm traveled here, I like to travel a lot personally too, um, I can take 12 of these, right, on the road, and right. I can have a lot of colors there, right? Right. But imagine if you gave a acrylic user a tube this size. <laughs> yeah, they go, whoa, 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 okay, well, so there, that was cool, and that was five, five minutes, brush yep. strokes, yeah, yeah exactly. what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do with it? <laughs> right. So that's why I say that we're we're this is a product that's targeted at an acrylic user right, who's definitely. looking for gouache like mm -hmm. attributes. And by all means, if if we haven't been clear so far, guys out there, uh, throw questions at us about the difference between acrylics, uh, traditional gouache, and and acrylic gouache as well. Um, this one, uh, Vivid Lime Green, with blended. Oh, I got something on there with uh, blended fibers. Uh, so blended oh, wow. fibers is a medium that is quite matte to begin with right. anyway. Um, so so you're yeah, you're you keeping your matte sheen mm -hmm. with this, but you're adding these funky textures to it that have, cool. have the feeling of almost torn fibers yeah, embedded uh, in it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it gives you that versatility. Also, once again, unlike the uh, gloss gel, ultra matte gel, so you want to keep the matte sheen to it, but you want to add that thickness, right? Yeah. A little bit of body to it, extend that. That's nice. Yeah, and it's nice. It's not really changing the color a whole lot mm -hmm. by adding a, a, a chunk of that in no, there. No, it's very... Yeah, kind of nice. Um, and let, so let's take a look at a few of those things. Let's, because uh, we have a few mediums, we can get rid of this one as well. Actually, let's take a different surface. Let's take, sure. I've got a canvas board right here. Um, and I think we'll take, uh, what do we got? We got glass beads here. So I'm going to take this, a little bit of glass beads, and put that on here. And you can hear, let's see, a little bit quiet, of sound. Quiet, quiet, quiet. There's your little glass beads in there. I love yeah. it. It and sounds like walking in crunchy snow. It yeah. Does. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got those oh, little, yeah. right, little aggregates in there. So if I want to take a little bit more out of here. If I want to do that, and I want to add, let's take a different color. We'll take that. And it's on a I canvas like panel. Board. If you can't canvas panel, it, it, it's it's a little hard to see. And we can mix that in there. Whoa! Yeah, when you add that blue, good God, that little tiny bit. Look how wow. much that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you can you see that pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if we can see. I don't the know. I don't know. Really does it help if I even hold that? You might have to hold it up so they can see. Just hold it up oh, towards up, the up. camera. Up, up. Just they, yeah. so they can yeah. see the beads. Okay, now there yeah, you go. You can Perfect. see those yeah. little aggregates in there. So again, I, I say know what you're looking for out mm -hmm. of the bottle. Make sure it does the most things that right. you want. So again, I'll, hey, I'm I'm somebody. You know, they're, you're in a Jerry store. You're in somewhere, and you say, I want something that's matte. I want something that's right. as opaque as possible. I want something to be very flexible, and I want it to be fluid. Awesome, cool. Here's a product for right. you. Right. But you don't want that every day. You know, you want you want right. to do some funky things like this. Or let's uh, remove that that off of there. You want to do what do I have here? Oh, the blended fibers we talked about oh, yeah, before. Yeah. yeah. They they almost have out of the jar. Let me bring that up there too. Almost has like a tapioca. <laughs> It does. It, ish look it does. To like it. a little bit thicker than that. Right. A little. Yeah. A little thicker than that. By the it's way, it's almost like like tapioca pudding and small curd cottage cheese. Yeah, and I do Had not a very like. Refined I don't baby. like either one of those oh, at yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, I don't it have. It smells like neither. I don't have the. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't have the heat seal off that, and that's heavy oh, body well, anyway. Yeah. No, no. It's a good. It's it's a good time to remind everybody again. <laughs> yeah. White one is soft body. The new liquid acrylic wash is the black cap. So I did take the cap off of this one, and we'll put that Think out. Think of it this way: it's thinner, so it's like ink. Yeah. See. And so there we go. We can mix that in. Hey, whenever you guys are ready for questions, I have a ton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Throw throw them at us. Um. Oh, can you use these on glass? Can we use them on glass? Um, you could use it on glass. Keep in mind, though, it's an it's an acrylic, right? So acrylics, the the, the surfaces they don't love are slick surfaces. They don't love greasy surfaces. Yes. So can you paint on glass? Yeah, you could paint on glass, but know that you're going to have more of the ability for that to be marred or nicked or things like that. 
So I would, I would pose the question, I, I sort of I answered it with an answer, but I'll answer it with a question as well. What are you doing with that glass? Right. Right, so is that gonna be somewhere where it's really uh, protected? Uh, listen, right. these are, are also, let's keep in mind too, because you're saying glass, these are art material products. Right. Don't use it's it on something a, you're, yes, you're eating off yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, right? You're something you're drinking from or things like right. that. Um, but if it's gonna be something where it's not gonna come in contact with a lot right. of things, and let me go back to the skateboard even for a well, second. Well, probably here. if it's climate controlled glass, I, I know I've done, I've done like a Christmas mural on a, a storefront glass yeah. before. Mm -hmm was great until it got really cold mm. and then if people like touched it or whatever it started wanting to peel yeah, off. Yeah, sure, just sure. From the temperature change. So I mean keep in mind with 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 surfaces, right? Uh, so so if you were to go buy a skateboard deck in a store, right? That would be uh, printed on that surface. Mm -hmm. Um and even so, when a kid takes that yeah, oh yeah, and grinds a rail, yeah. you're going to you're going to yep you know, take that finish right. off of there. So is it gonna, you know, could I damage it by keep on doing oh, yeah, that? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Um, as, a, as a decorative surface or something, you know, like let's say you're somebody who's into skate culture. I've, I've, seen, um, I've seen these used as risers for steps. Oh, cool. For stairs in a house oh, and like, in like the, you know, uh, home mags, you've seen that too? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Really cool, I've seen people uh, drill holes into a skate uh, deck in a, uh, downward manner for uh, wine bottle holders. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, there's some <laughs> projects for you, maybe. Um, but you know, you're painting cool. something yeah. like that. It's not yeah. being you know, abused. Right. That's one right. thing. So yeah, I would say, we'll put it this, this way. Can we make those little rails again? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I would say, yeah, it, it can go on glass. But again, right. that's not the surface that it's going to love. Right. I'm not as smart as Amy. She's got an apron on. Um, acrylics love fabric. <laughs> That's, that's you have it right yeah, there. Yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. So Most of my clothes do. Luckily, I'm okay so far. I should put this back on. <laughs> but they love they love something that that they can grab right. to, and that's why texture. flip surface yeah, and anyway. absorbent texture. Even absorbent more, texture, so. yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. What's uh, what else? What else we got? Um, how what's the dry time like? Dry time, uh, very similar to any acrylics. Mm -hmm. Um, they're they're gonna you know it depends on your atmosphere. Um five to seven minutes or so. I, I would say this though, um, good idea to know what your space is like compared to my yes. space working in. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I always tell people with acrylics, uh, I have painted in very dry, warm climates. Yep. Could be drying coming off the brush and starting to get tacked yeah. up in the brush, yep. I also remember vividly yep. being on vacation in Cape Cod uh, in, in June and it was a rainy day and I was under an awning yeah. and my acrylics on my palette were wet the whole time. Uh, they stayed open for 30, 40, 50 minutes, and they were, and they, right, which, because wow. everything yeah. was just so yeah, yeah, humid yeah. and wet. Right. So, right, so it depends on that. I would note what, what's the temperature in your studio, if you know relative humidity is, right. as well, and then you can do little tests like that. I always tell people to do that, too. Um, Liquitex makes a slow-dry uh, mm -hmm. gel and a slow-dry fluid mm -hmm. medium. So what I always have people do is I have them put a bit of the color down without, mm -hmm. right, and, and, and then put some down with, with the slow-dry medium That's in it, pretty cool. set your Smart. timer, right, and then just do a touch test every so often and make a note. Mm -hmm. So the one without the slow-dry, oh, okay, it's been three minutes, it's still totally wet, yeah. this is starting to get tacky. It's right. been five, this is getting tacky, this is whatever is right. between tacky and, right. and and almost but, tacky and, and dry. Well, and that's and but and that's gonna if you're even if you're in a super climate controlled area, most people's studios aren't like in their house right. house where it's you know, and and you know depending on what time of the year and everything. Oh yeah, totally. New house, old house. Totally, it, totally, it's all, absolutely. It's it's gonna change from How much day air is to moving around. day potentially. Yeah, yeah, it, so. it definitely can. And I, I also think that's why I, I keep saying too, with with not. You know, whatever media you're using, know what you're trying yes. to do. Yes. So if you're somebody who is uh, wanting acrylics to stay open for days and days and days, then you're then in the you wrong media. Yeah, you probably <laughs> you probably really want oil. Yeah. Um, other questions. Um. Yes. Um, yeah, we got a ton. It gets good. Easily mixable for color wise. For like mixing colors together. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. That's that's a good question actually. Um, I do think it mixes really, really well. Let's take um, let's take some of the vivid lime green. Make sure I have these back on here well. <laughs> I do that a lot at shows and things and events. I don't uh, don't put caps on as well as they should. 
Um, yeah, we'll just take a palette knife here and just blend those two together. Uh, oh, I mean, nice. really, yeah, Easier so smooth. Easier than like a heavy body and stuff because of that fluid nature too. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. So I'm mixing, wipes, yeah, I'm mixing that really, really fast. Um, okay, so again, because, uh, uh, go back to our original yeah. thing, I, I keep yeah. harping on it because uh -huh. I, I, yeah. I want everybody to know this. No, I think. Acrylics, traditional gouache, acrylic gouache. Um, so you, you don't want to mix a traditional gouache with this because it's gum arabic no. based. Mm -mm. This is acrylic based. So because these are all acrylic based, this is what's nice. You, you have a product in the range and you say, oh, you know what, okay, I have this acrylic gouache, but I, let's say you didn't have the yellow that I right. just squeezed out, right. but you've got our Liquitex acrylic ink. Take my little squeeze dropper, put some of that in there. You can already see that mixing with it. Obviously that's gonna make it more fluid. Oh yeah, definitely. Right, so I can change my viscosity there, but that's gonna seamlessly mix with it as well. So it gives me the ability Right, oh, to even yeah. make it more fluid. I didn't add a whole lot, so I really no, didn't change the color still, a lot. It's still, right. I mean, but again, made a difference. I have that versatility. So I go back to traditional gouache, hallmarks, matte, mm -hmm. opaque, um, smaller scale. Right. Uh, I look at acrylics, large scale, flexible, versatility, want to do a lot. Yes. Mm. But flexibility, for, and I'm, and I'm going to mm. say this, mm. From having used other brands of acrylic gouache yeah. for your guys's, okay, not for other brands of acrylic gouache, because where you were talking about the cat, and, and I'm saying this just because I don't want people to be. This is one of those products where I think, you know, so people are always like, "Well, can I use, you know, Windsor Newton oil paint with yeah, this brand yeah, or that yeah, brand?" Yeah, yeah. Oil paints, for the most part, play mm -hmm. together well. Mm -hmm. With this, I just the flexibility factor that you guys have, and that's and it's something that I've thought in using acrylic wash before. Okay. Um, I, I usually tell people don't even think about using acrylic wash on a, like a flexible surface okay. because you're okay. going to get cracked sure. because they don't put enough resin in it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Which is how they keep it matte. Every brand does it differently. I, it, watercolor wash, mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. That all plays pretty nicely together. I'm, I'm, and I'm saying this because I, I don't want people to then go out and buy a whole bunch of brands and then they're bringing in Liquitex and sure. then it's not mixing well. This is so much more flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, that's, and, and, and which is, which, but the, the beauty of that is if you want to work large scale, mm -hmm. you can work on stretch canvas and stuff like that. I would never, ever in a hundred years recommend right. with other brands yeah. of acrylic gouache yeah. doing that because you're going to be really, really sad when yeah, it Yeah, because if you're working if you're working larger scale unless yes. it's on a you know, unless it's on a wall. Yes. Right? You're yes. it'd be weird if anybody knocked back. I don't know if there's anything beyond there. Yeah. Uh, but that's a solid wall, right? That's a that's a very rigid surface. Right. Um, we're not gonna have Well flex. and it's a rigid surface that's not going to have have uh, you know the flex and stuff with temperature changes, with humidity changes. Right, right. right. Right, well, yeah, also it's an interior wall. Right. But, 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 yeah, by and large, if you're working large scale, unless it's on a wall, you're probably going to be right. working on a big, large, right. stretched canvas. And then, again, that's going to have flexibility issues. Yes. It takes on moisture. It expels moisture. Right. Um, and, again, that's why you want to store, definitely store your acrylics, though. In a, you you want to do your best to, to always store your, your, your products, whether they're in containers or finished pieces of art in a climate controlled space yes. as much as possible. Yes. I get it though, you paint where you need to right. paint and that's not always possible. Right. But the thing is if you have acrylic paintings, acrylic work, and you have it in a space that is not climate controlled and it gets very cold, then just don't go messing around and right. moving or touching a canvas right. and pushing it from the back. Be right. careful right. with right. flexing and moving stuff. Right. Let it let it come up the warm uh, to, to warm up the room temperature. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, again, like uh, like we were saying, Traditional gum arabic based squash has flexibility issues. Right. If you get too thick, that's part of the nature of the beast. Right. I know that. I avoid that. You can actually see though that where even even famous artists, John Singer Sargent, yes. Homer paintings, yep. you can see little moments yep. of uh, traditional gouache yeah. where it cracked because they went in and yep. did little highlights with it. Right. Um, so even those guys, you know, major major people uh, in in the art world. Um, another question? Yeah. We got we got hands being waved that's over okay. here. Fantastic. They're not yes, really that friendly. Okay. Either. Um, first question was um, in terms of mixing with other products. How does it mix with the heavy body paints, for example? Yeah, let's do it. 
That's a good. I, I like I like questions like that where we can. Uh, well, here we'll do it on this one. Well, yeah, yeah. We, we can do it. So let's take some heavy body. Ah, good. I'm, I'm glad that question came up uh, because the heavy body tube I have is caviar free orange. Okay. So so hold that thought. I'm gonna mix with heavy body. Whoever asked that question out there, I'm, I'm gonna do that for you. But it's a good opportunity um, in. Liquitex acrylic gouache, we've got the cadmium free range of colors, mm. right? So the same ones that we came out with, um, so our uh, yellow, uh, mm. cadmium free, light, medium, deep, red, light, medium, deep, and orange, which is what I have here, mm. um, we've got that in cadmium free as well. Um, no cadmiums in that range, it's a new range, so just cadmium free. Nice. Um, I, I like that. I, I think it's an innovation that, that uh, I'm, I'm seeing other brands starting to do that. Um, I think it's a thing that for people who want to move mm -hmm. a, a product like cadmium out of their palate, they, they can, um, and, and really great results. And that's exciting to me to get to test those things. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and make sure they're up to snuff. But let's take Heavy Body right here, right, quite thick. Um, and let's take the yellow again just because it'll mix nicely, the purple and the uh, orange. Eh, not such a great mix of color. That's a nice. I'll put that nice. there. We'll put that. we'll put a little. I don't know. Does it matter? We'll put about the same amount. No, I don't there. Think so. And let me just wipe this off because I do have some blue on there. I, I mean, mess up the, that uh, color. The, the big thing that with this, your texture. I mean, it's acrylic to acrylic. Yeah, it's acrylic way, to acrylic. What you're going to be altering is the sheen. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. You right. know, just just like with the and and this is you know why acrylics play so well together when he showed the gloss gel, when he showed the fiber paste, all those are just different thicknesses of, gloss gel is is colorless paint. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. the binder, so, so I mean, so that stands to, and that's something that, I mean, we know, because mm -hmm. this is what we do. What we do, but, yeah, sure, sure. But, but that's, so if it, it's gonna work with that type of stuff, it's gonna work with paint. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, you bring up a good point. I was here last month and we were talking about dr uh, drying oils. So you, you take a linseed oil, mm -hmm. it's your binder mm -hmm. and your paint, and then you add your pigment, and other things get in there too, but right. you add your pigment to the binder mm -hmm. and essentially you have paint. Right. Simple as that. So take the pigment out of it and mm -hmm. you just have your linseed oil right. left. So take your, uh, take your color out of this and what do you have? You have, we have uh, gloss gel here and you basically have, that off again. Try not to infect <laughs> your jars of medium by sticking dirty things <coughs> in there. Um, but basically, if we had dried pigment, right. we could mix it with that, and we'd get that viscosity right. going on right there. So yeah, that mixes really, really beautifully. I want to make build that body right. up more. Uh, a nice way to do that, uh, and and more of an economical way. You know, we go. I, I say we, uh, the, the education program I run, the Fine Art Collective, we go into colleges and we mm -hmm. do demonstrations. And uh, a medium like a gloss gel, or if you want to go matte, if that's mm -hmm. the sheen you want, a matte gel, to me, those are like, those are two workhorses. Right. And, and right, the reason right. I say that is because as a student sometimes, or whatever, a, a student of any age, and you don't have to be a college student, some of you might out there be students, students of life, people who are looking mm -hmm. for a, a, a deal. Mm -hmm. um, this is about, to me, a medium is about value. Right. Because the most expensive part of this paint is your pigment. Right. It's right, your right. color, right. So if right. I can add a medium to it and build up the body of that paint right. even more, great way to be able to do well, that. Well, it's, it's okay, and so for, for layman's terms, yeah. this is the best way to, to make a better quality student grade paint. Yeah, I'll Because add, you've, yeah. Got, you've got the professional quality pigments. Sure. You're using, something to extend that yeah, so you're, you're getting more it. paint out of it, it but it's still professional quality mm -hmm. vehicle right yep, absolutely so rather than and, and it's a cheaper way in my opinion to get make the color last further because you've got such a higher pigment load yeah. in a professional quality yeah. paint but you can extend that to more of what a student right. grade pigment load would right. be in something well, and, and value is always value is always about looking to find out how you get more for the money you right. spend. Exactly. You know, so so that that's it why it doesn't mean you, cheap. No, no, it doesn't right. mean cheap. That's that's why when you go shopping, you look at things and say, okay, it, it, yeah, sure, there's this bigger size, 
or right. whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's food or art right. supplies, right. and you go, well, but that's more money. Well, okay, that's fine, but would you like to put out more money for a larger size, or then you do the math and you buy two smaller right. sizes and you realize you're paying more. more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th this is a way to add, uh, add value. And while I have the orange, before we get to the next question, um, this is the uh, cadmium-free orange in Liquitex acrylic gouache. Um, so full strength there, and I've gone, what do I have, three rows of five here. I've, I've gone down 14 steps, um, and you, you see the strength of color here. But then a nice way to get down to with a whole lot of white, almost like an unbleached titanium. That's, yeah, yeah it's or, a beautiful. or like a really pale Naples yellow Yeah, 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 like almost. a Naples yellow, right, you yeah. almost get that. Like, yeah, right yeah, here, right? that's, I was just like, Yeah, Whoa. yeah, so beautiful, yeah. you know, a beautiful way to bring out the characteristics of your, of your colors. You guys see that a little better? Yeah. So I gotta, see, I gotta know I, where I am Now here. I can make my own Naples yellow yeah. from that. Well, that's why, you know, Since that's one of my favorite colors. That's why color just, mixing is so yeah. important and, and just knowing what your colors can do. Right. And, and ha you know, listen, you don't need to do something at home where you, I tape this off and it's a nice little. I mean, you that, can. You can. I mean, there's, there's a lot of time to that. <laughs> so you can't do that, both like, yeah. but you can. It looks nice. But, but you know, well, to, it's, to, it's to go learn, through and it's make learning. swatches. It's, it, well, and it's okay. So, yes, I, I just. Just a, this doesn't have anything to do with, with what we're talking yeah. about for the paint. In learning to do this, you're also learning to control your paint with mixing. Mm -hmm. You're teaching yourself proper mixing proportions, so it's a shortcut for later. Yeah, absolutely, so absolutely. They know, they know I'm into color in. charts. Yeah, so. no, that's cool, it, because... I yeah, it, listen, yeah. It, it's something that if you can take the time, I, I may have mentioned this when I was here last month, but I'll, I think it bears repeating, is take a little time at the, at, the, uh, you know, at the beginning of your studio session. If you're, I don't know, some days I go in there and I'm just not into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not yeah. into it. Play around the color a little mm -hmm. bit. Take notes. See what it's doing. So yes, when you get to the actual act of painting, right. you've got an arsenal of information. Right. Yeah, it's good to, good to, good to do. Um, next question. In a show, would you classify it as acrylic or gouache pool? Acrylic. Okay. It's firmly acrylic because it's an acrylic polymer. That's its base. But then again, that name acrylic gouache means it's an acrylic that has gouache-like attributes. Which, which means opa opacity, higher opacity, yeah. and matteness. Yeah. So listen, this is good that I have ink here. Yes. Okay? Yes. This, is, this is Liquitex ink. A lot of, not all, but a lot of inks are dyes in a shellac base. Right. Okay? That, that might be what you find. This is pigments in an acrylic polymer. It's just that the acrylic, so it's a little bit of a misnomer. Technically speaking, is it an ink? We could say technically it's not. But why did we call it ink? Because I can do everything right. that an ink right. does. So it's an acrylic. It's, it's, it's a very fluid acrylic. It's, it's a still very an fluid acrylic. Resin base. Right. So, so got... I can take a crow quill mm -hmm. pen, a dip pen. Yep. I can do that. I can run it through technical an airbrush, pens. a technical yep. pen. Uh, a, a brush, brush and ink, mm -hmm. pen and ink, write with it, calligraphy. Can yes. you use the gouache and the airbrush? The, the, uh, the gouache is too thick for that. Yeah, too thick for that. Good question. Um, what, what could you do with that? We make airbrush medium. You could thin it down to the consistency because we do thin down a uh, soft body to the consistency to go through an airbrush. But then, but then it, this, is, this is a better value to do something like that with. The, we always talk about this. The, the, you're adding that airbrush medium, so you're taking away the opacity right. with it to thin it down. And you're trying to and get you're probably it taking like away some of the madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're trying, yeah, you're trying just, to get it. Just here. like he said, figure out what you want to do yeah. first. Yeah. Are you wanting to airbrush? Then this isn't. That's not. Right. So, so these these are thick. You, that that are you, can you airbrush with toothpaste? Yeah. So for instance, can you airbrush with suntan lotion? I mean. So think about well, think about this consistency. Is that Katie probably can because uh, the makeup thing. Yeah. She's, she goes. <laughs> She's at home. Would you say it performs well in cold and heat? Does it perform well in cold and heat? For example, if you're plein air painting. Uh huh. Yeah, listen, if you're plein air, I, I love to plein air paint. If you're plein air painting and it's a really warm day, remember what we talked about with drying times with acrylics? going to dry it much, much faster. Yes. Remember what I just talked about uh, painting Cape Cod under an awning on a wet, yeah, humid yeah, yeah. day? it's going to dry much slower. So it'll, right. it'll work in either one. Um, what would I do if I was uh, working with the acrylic gouache or any of these acrylic products in a warm atmosphere plein air painting? I would probably use, we have, a, we have what's called a palette wetting spray, spray yep. and I would spritz my surface with that. You could say, well, can you just spritz it with water, Jimmy? 
You can. It's going to make it more runny yes. and, and more fluid, and the water is going to evaporate uh, more quickly. But pallet wetting spray is a right. is a really really it, thin it is, version. Yes, of a retarder. Oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's an acrylic oh, polymer. You have some. <laughs> awesome. We got everything. So what I would do is I would. I don't know if that's. Is there a wall of? Off there, there, or I think we have almost all of them. I do we? Oh, I would yeah. when we did the Boom. medium. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if you can see that now up here. I would spritz it like that, and that would keep that open long. That's, that's not an easy thing to see no, right here, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, you I can, can see yeah. that. Well, you can see a little bit of the I'll a little bit it. of the of the white. Which well, listen, is here we'll go. I'm yeah. gonna go extra. Now you can see it run. <laughs> I'm really you know pushing. But but the thing about that though uh, is is that I'm I'm doing that with an acrylic polymer, right. so it's still got the resin to right. it instead of water. Now, but my point in putting out the uh, thank you for that. That was cool. I was I was like uh, I wish I could just be at home and mention things and then people hand it I to know. me. I know. That's like my wife a and uh, my wife and daughter are probably watching and going, yeah, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> that's not. Yeah. Wish away, just I know, wish yeah. away. Um, but the thing is, like you know, you ask about can it go through an airbrush? Well, there's there's heavy body, right? right? Could I get that down to this <coughs> consistency? Sure, but why would I work so hard right. to get right, that right. down there when this is the time you're you're here. you're taking way yeah. too much time that you could be working to alter something? Right, and uh, we'll take another question, but let me show uh, let me show this. We'll go kind of back and forth here. Um, a little primary mixing chart I did. So we've got our primary uh, primary red, primary blue, and primary yellow. Um, so obviously, mixing secondary colors okay. are all about uh, all about proportions. You're getting more of a secondary. Uh, color right here, secondary mm -hmm. deep, deep violet mm -hmm. right here. And let's actually mix that because we have, this is a primary mixing set. So we've got uh, yellow, red, blue, it's also got emerald green, Mars black, and titanium white. Mm. So I'm going to ask you, Amy, because the heat seals aren't off of those, if you could do that for me. I'm going to pop the heat this seal off of it. this. So just, yeah, I don't want to mess up your shiny nails there. Oh, but. no, no. All right, um, we'll take this off. Try not to spritz this in my face. Oh, you did that a lot. My wife is Colleen. <laughs> yeah, I was she was like, forget it. <laughs> Wait, so I don't, let's, See, now you're in trouble. Let's not talk about what she's saying. So let's you're not, lucky. My, my own kid that's an art major, <laughs> junior college, doesn't even watch this. <laughs> I'm just going to assume right now the comments that she's making are wonderful. All appropriate. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to put out some primary <laughs> blue right here. That's funny. Hello, my bride. <laughs> hey, is there any fabric you can't use to wash on? Any fabric oh. you can't? Um, <laughs> that's a great question, and I, I'm, I'm going to be real honest with this. I, 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 I don't know at this point. I, I've used it on um, certainly things like T-shirts I've tried it on, on uh, canvas like this. Have I tried it on silk? No, but I know people have painted with acrylic on that. It, it's, it's not the worst thing in, in having done some and, and knowing other people that do some stuff to use a fabric medium with it. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 listen, a fabric medium uh, is great. Because it's going to bond it the best to it and then it can be heat set or d whatever the instructions are on that a fabric medium is always the way yeah, to go yeah, with yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and, a fa fabric and not medium, putting it through the dryer. Right, right, and fabric medium will help it from being so like, cr like if you get acrylic yes. on your shirt, yes. there, it's crunchy, Yes. right, it's very stiff, yes. and that'll yes. help it, not, a fabric medium Make will help it soft. not be. Yep. Right, so I, the, Ooh, the red nice. is much stronger than the blue, um, so I made this violet, and let's add, um, and that's a, that's a really that's beautiful, really nice, deep, deep yeah. violet, but let's add oh. a little bit of white to it. Um, okay. Now I'm already more dirty. Oh, I took the, I took it off of there. I anticipated. There you go. Cool. Um, <laughs> put a little little dash of white there, and we'll pull that in. Yeah, that's beautiful. We'll get that gorgeous violet. You see, obviously, I have a, more of a percentage of blue yeah, in yeah. there, but you get this beautiful violet out of there. Um, so. So we talked about opacity. Um, the chemist made it as opaque as, as possible on certain colors, mm -hmm. but all, all pigments are different yes. too. Also with the primary colors too, what they tried to do is keep those more uh, semi-opaque to transparent, which is making cleaner mm -hmm. secondary mixes. Mm -hmm. Also keep in mind, if you were to go through all the colors in a traditional uh, gouache, gum Arabic based gouache line, 
They're very opaque, but not everyone is 100% opaque. Right, right. Same can right. be said of watercolor, right. uh, of your transparent mm -hmm. watercolors. There are op opaque ratings right. and, uh, and um, transparent, I was like, what is, what is the other, what's no, the opposite okay. of opaque? <laughs> transparent uh, in there as well. But we think of, naturally, because we lay down thin washes right. of watercolor, we think about transparency so much. Right. Yeah. Um, next question. Um, can you use it under pastels, ink, or oil pastels? Use it under those things. Or conversely, yeah. can you use those yeah. things over it? Okay. Yeah. So okay. So let's let's talk here. Let me think about this. Um, when when you're working with acrylics, acrylics are going to create a, a slicker surface. Mm -hmm. Certainly, things like pastels don't love a slick surface because they want to grab onto something. But I think I think the I mean the opacity of these is going to make makes it, it a much more ideal than just straight up regular acrylics. Yes. Yes. Because it's because, because it's that, got yeah it's got some it's got more tooth the to opacifiers it. in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have more tooth yeah. to it. Um, so so that question if you're if you're doing it over something like soft body, heavy body, and mm -hmm. so on, it's going to want to slide across that surface and not want to do that. But as Amy right. said, um, more of that matte finish makes it not so yeah. slick. Certainly, obviously, you guys can only watch this, but if I was to rub my hand on this no, compared got, to got here. Just, just a slight tooth to it. It's yeah, really it wants nice. to slide. Yes. Um, so yeah, you could, you from, could do. From having experimented with underpaintings with those mediums, mm -hmm. this would be, uh, yeah. an acrylic gouache would be ideal because number yeah. one, it's permanent. So if you, you know, if you're using like oil pastels or something and slop a little bit of solvent on it, it's not going to pick up like a water. Sure, wash. sure. Yeah, cer certainly. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, certainly for an underpainting. Yes. Um, yeah, because a lot of times people, you know, the thing about using acrylics under oils is you don't want to get super thick with right. acrylics and then paint oils over right. them because acrylics yes. are so flexible. Thank you. Um, and I also want to mention this about flexibility. We've been talking about flexibility a lot since it's a hallmark of this product. Just in general with acrylics, if you guys are out there, a lot of times, even though acrylics dry fast, some people mm -hmm. will take a hair dryer to something. Oh my gosh. Okay? Be careful with that, especially in thick yes. layers, because the downside, what will happen is somebody will have a thick layer, they'll hit it with a hair dryer, often I think just by nature, I don't care who we are, we're, we're impatient Patient. beings. But it's still acrylic. It, it stinking. Wait a few minutes. You wait a little bit, but <laughs> but when you have something thick and you yeah. hit it with a hair dryer, what you yeah. do is you get the top layer yep. to dry. Yep. Everything underneath is still flexing, right. and that's where you can get cracking. You can get fissures in there. And if you don't, and especially if you're using something like a clear gel to build up texture, mm -hmm. but you want any translucency through it at all, yeah, you might force that top layer to dry completely, and then sure. it will trap the water right, right, right. down inside and you'll never get rid of that cloudiness. Yeah, yeah, you get a cloudiness in there. And and then also, it just just in the in speaking about that too, pouring medium has been yes. such a craze yes. for the past, gosh, what, two such, years? Such Paul a craze. Um, oh. uh, yeah, so we talk about crazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazing is when yes. you have fissures, when you have, yes. almost, crazing almost looks like a dried uh, lake bed. You know that the where the from, mud from just from very starts mild. To, well, and 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 you, sometimes you don't even get the cracking. You just get that little bit. Yeah, just, yeah. just slight depressions. And yeah. It's like, so uh, on top, off topic on acrylic it's gouache, but somewhere. on topic with flexibility. Um, when people have um, are doing things with pouring medium out there, because I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make an assumption that some of you are. Think about your environment doing that. If you're doing that in a very dry atmosphere, that's where you can get crazing happen yes. more because that top layer is yes. drying, everything else is flexing. Right. Right. Or you get crazing too when people do a pour and they put a border on something and, and make yes. this super thick. I, yeah, I think it's yeah. even worse when yeah. it's oh, like that. Oh, definitely worse. Yeah, because it sure. because it forces that layer to be thicker with the with the with the ones that are for pouring liquid panels. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show uh, another little mixing thing and then and then we'll take another question. So this was just a little mixing chart I made with the acrylic gouache that you said like mm -hmm. like mixing stuff. Um, so with the primary red, yellow, blue, with the emerald green. Uh, black and white. Um, I went titanium white to yeah. primary yellow here, titanium white to primary yellow here, so the same across here. You know, so think about this as A, B, C, D, E, you know, yeah, yeah. one, two, three, four, five. And um, I, the mixtures I made are, I'll pull that near the center a little bit more, um, the mixture I made, your yellows are making your way all the way yeah, through yeah. here. Um, and then uh, yeah, obviously here I'm mixing with the red to get the, uh, the orange, and then so on at each intersection. So. Um, coming across here, 
uh, from the primary blue to the emerald green, and we're getting this color mix here. I, I like the subtleties of what happens with a, a black. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in art school, uh, teachers are so against yeah black. Mm -hmm. I, I I am when when you're using black. Uh, when everything because, looks like that outlined. Yeah, and maybe you're not being yeah. not being so inventive with yes. what you can do with chromatic blacks, right. uh, right, chromatic right. grays, um, and and you get some of the, that chroma here. Look at that with the primary red to That's the black. That's really nice. You get this deep, deep. Yeah, almost like a burgundy. Or yeah, something. very deep burgundy, right? Um, I love the the beauty here with the Mars black and the primary yellow. This deep, deep olive green, uh, and then, a, and then a, a, you know, deeper still right here. Mm. Um, really, kind of some beautiful, subtle things there. But I, I could do this with many more steps, right. many more colors in the range. You know, I didn't. It's like I didn't use. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh my Yeah. Our giant one. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. right? Expand. But, right. But okay, so same yeah. thing. Ivory so, black yeah, to yeah. yellow. Yeah, and then yeah. And then over. And then the same way. Yeah. And now you're doing your cross sections. Right. And yeah, what you what you realize? I don't know how many. I'm not going to count them all out here, but I, I would have twenty I can't remember. colors or something. Uh, whatever. A lot. It looks like about 30 colors. 30, okay. And then everything that yeah. you get in here. Um, would that be a sort of a bit of a maddening chart to make? But you'd learn something. And you don't have to sit no, and no, do no, it no, all no. at once yeah. either. You know, you can yes. experiment with colors. That's, that's yes. my point. Experiment with colors. Play with them. So if you get a set of these, um, you can do a little chart like this. This mm -hmm. Again, this is, uh, yeah, I should, sorry, I should colors. say. Yeah. This is the six uh, primary mixing set. Mm -hmm. All right, so 59, 59 mil mm -hmm. um, jars. So this is, um, this jar is actually the same as this. Um, same size. Mm. So the size hasn't changed right. from the old packaging to the new, mm -hmm. um, but with, with the cap and everything, different format, you know. It looks more buff. Yeah, it does. It looks. It's, it's like it's been working is, out. Yeah, like, yeah. He's been sitting on the great. couch, and this, and this one's yeah. Tough guy over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with that little set, you know, these these are me really basically just doing like one to one uh, right. ratio, one to one right. mixtures. Yeah. So play around. What happens when you do you know thirty seventy or forty sixty or so on and so on? Um, what happens when you take some of these colors and move it out with uh, different tints of, of white even right. further? Because right. um, you get this beautiful, gorgeous pastel yeah, range yeah. of like that's. That's lovely. That's a gorgeous oh, yeah, yeah. little, right? That's I mean, amazing. I, I, I like that's very much uh, very Matisse. Mm -hmm. You know that that beautiful, very much beautiful so. pink there. Um, sorry, I want to get to a few more questions before we yeah. Sorry, our, run out. artists are suddenly two, stuck two more, yeah, yeah, throw them at us. Um, what mediums can go over it specifically? Resin and varnish. Resin and varnish. Um, and how would you seal? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you can, uh, just like you would any other acrylic. So yes, you can use any Liquitex varnish with it. Um, not a problem. So that's that kind of goes back to early on when I was saying I like a really matte finish. Mm -hmm. That's because I, I I hate nothing more than photographing my work yes, because I'm not yes, good at it. Yeah. Um, and I, I my brother doesn't have that. I used to bother him constantly because he's really good at it. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't do that anymore. In the family he's quite, Yeah, he's quite busy. <laughs> so with a matte finish with acrylic gouache, I can get uh, and that's why like watercolor is easy right, to right, photograph. Right. right, it's very matte. I can photograph the work, but I do like a gloss sheen to things. So I can varnish later on. So yes, you can put the varnishes on there. Um, our Liquitex um, water-based varnishes, uh, because again, this is permanent mm -hmm. when dry, because it's an acrylic. Right. You can also use our, our Liquitex Solivar varnish uh, over it as well. Right. Um, now, but the, the other one was resin. Oh yeah, sorry. With the Solivar, is it good to do the isolation coats? Isolation coats are good. Just so, in case yeah, yeah, something yeah. happened and you need to. It's not a bad idea it. anyway. So if if you if you don't know what an isolation coat is, uh, I don't have they, it here with me tonight. They better at this. Oh, they, better they better wash the varnishing episode. I mean, I think. Has class been listening? <laughs> yeah, well, they they have it because they always post stuff and they're like, does anybody know how to? And and Tina, always jumps in and gives them the episode. Tina's on it. Tina's, well, Tina's like our unofficial assistant. I mean, listen, this this is why it's good. This I don't know. I think anything that you do that you get involved in, whether that be art or some sport that you take up or a musical instrument, mm -hmm. um, repetition yes. is, is, is king. You, yes. Because you, you, it's hard this to take in everything. This is artistic muscle memory. It is, absolutely. Um, 
So, so sorry, but your your question. What did we we got off there? About about, about isolation codes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so an isolation code that you better know. If, if you're, yeah, if you're gonna be using something I, like a solid, like yeah. if you're gonna be using a removable varnish. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't have it with me tonight, but uh, our gloss medium and varnish. Um, if you put, <laughs> they're over I, there. I got a I got a note that it might be around <laughs> somewhere. It's okay. You don't have to dig it out though. Oh, it's oh, fine. that's it's actually probably up there. Yeah. But gloss medium and varnish is is not removable. So you could put right. that down first, and then your removable varnish. So later on, if you have to remove the removable mm -hmm. varnish with mineral spirits, you're never actually down to the right. paint layer. So right. you've got an isolation or a protective barrier. Um, so you could do that. Resin was the other question. Um, that's a little tricky. I, I'm, I'm assuming what you're referring to is there, there are resins out there in hardware stores and things like that. Um, I think there's one, you might know this better than I, I think there's one called Art Resin. Art Resin, yeah. yeah. Yes, I, I, we don't carry it, but I've heard good things about it. Yeah. I, I, it's formulated I, for art, so that's yeah. always way better than just yeah. no, absolutely. mixing um, two-part epoxy and, and hoping it works. Somebody got tired of using... Yes. Uh, the hardware store. Yeah. Yeah. Creating so yeah. you you can you can buy a resin in a hardware store, which is basically like a, 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 a hardware grade polyurethane, yes. and that'll that'll yellow over yellows, time. Yes. Yeah, and, and a, woodworkers. A, a great place to know that is not only woodworking, but sometimes you go to some like bar and grill where they've taken a table or a bar. Yeah. And yeah. You know they've embedded coasters yeah, or yeah, little knickknacks, or something. And what yeah. they'll do gets that is, golden sheen. Yeah, they'll put a border on that yeah. bar when you're not there. They'll pour down yep. a polyurethane. Looks super cool for the bar, but it gets this really kind of yes. golden yellowy. Yes, and the older it gets, yeah, the, which looks the more awesome in a bar. Yes. Not something you're looking for in your artwork. So I wouldn't go to a hardware store. Um, we're not talking about oil paint, but but bear with me for a second. Same thing goes with linseed oil. You can buy linseed oil in a hardware store mm -hmm. for a fraction of the price, <sighs> but it's not purified. Bit. It's not distilled. No. It's not meant for the archi archival nature of right. making your artwork. So that's where we get into value. Is it really a value if right. your artwork suffers? No, it's it's not. It's not. You saved a few bucks, but be careful about that. Um, I have not used the art resin on this. I, I, I can tell you, though, I did receive a sample of the art resin, and I used it on other Liquitex products. I didn't have a problem with it. Cool. So I would not expect it with this. I'll have to see if I have some more back in the studio and, and try that. It's a good question. Uh, and it's always good to have questions like that. And, and I would also suggest with all of you out there, whenever you're doing anything like that, do little tests because as long as I've been doing this and you have too, there's always a way that somebody's going to come up with a question yes. that you couldn't have anticipated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or you have a new yep. product like this that's just come out and it's like, if, if you thought about every way beyond light fastness testing right, and, right, and right, permanence right. And, and, and what you intended right. its use for Somebody, to no. try it out on, yeah. uh, you'd, never, you'd never make it to no. market. No. <laughs> you'd never, no, because exactly. then we could say, well, how does it work on a snow shovel? I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We no, didn't, we didn't do that. But, but the, the, the resin's a good, it's a good yeah. question. Um, but stay away from hardware grade stuff. Um, and I've had I've had okay uh, n no problem with the R resin in other Liquitex products. Um, I had someone call customer service one time and ask me how paint would perform on a buzz saw. Yeah, like oh, they sure. Like they're gonna make art on it. Yeah. Like, I don't, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, try listen. It. <laughs> yeah, tons of different ways. I'm always always try things because the the beauty of art is that you it's self expression, mm -hmm. it's experimentation, and if nobody goes beyond what we right, say or right, prescribe right, that a right. product can do, then you never find things out. Right. Um, but that's why what you don't do, don't go to make this work that you're, you know, you've know, you intended for yes, a show or you. a gift yes. or a sale, a commission. Right, right. Don't experiment when something's, right, yes. you know, like I, I, somebody reached do. out to me last week and they, they, they want something, a quick turnaround for a commission for a, 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 a Christmas present. I'm not trying anything new that I don't know yeah, to, exactly. to do that. Um, and even exactly. if it wasn't. Now is not the time no, that's to not try the time. something new. It's not the yeah. time. But by all means, go in the studio, and when you try things, just like with the color mixing, write things down. Yes. That way you know what you did. Yes. Write down proportions. Write. B. It's just like baking, trying a new recipe. Yeah. You're like, oh, that tasted amazing. Yeah. 
how much did I put of what in there again? Yeah. Never do that. Yeah. Always write stuff down. And, and, and notebook. It's easier paper. said than done too, but sometimes people uh, will call into us, into, into Liquitex, they'll call into Jerry's, in the customer service. They'll have a problem with a product and you have to be a detective almost right. because when we're in the yes. process of making art sometimes, uh, be honest with you, yeah, if I'm playing with color mixing, I might jot things down, stuff like that, but if, and I'm in the act of making my work, right. I don't document every step, right. I'm making my work. Right. And and you don't think about the little things that maybe have changed no, in your I studio agree. since the last time. Right. So right, sometimes right. somebody says, well, this product didn't work. Well, has anything changed in your product? No, my right. process is always the same, but, but not always. No. Sometimes, it's... did you use a different brush today? And was that used for something else? Um, right. Was yes. it raining outside? Yeah. Was it raining right, outside? Yeah. Uh, who knows? Any, anyways. Yeah. Did did you did you thin the varnish to yeah. the specifications on the and, and always read the label. Yeah. There's labels put on stuff for directions for a reason. Thank you. I'm gonna finish with that. That's a good. That's a good. It's a good point. Thank you. And I and I, I didn't well, mention that. No. Uh, so one of the things that we've done with this new packaging is we've put information that you often find on the back of the label, a lot of things on the back of the label, put it in the forefront right here. Oh, look right? at that, pigment so, number right there. Yeah, so this is primary Ooh. blue, which is PB15, that, that's pigment blue 15. It's a series one, these are series one and two colors. Mm -hmm. It's uh, got the filled in square there, it's opaque, and mm -hmm. it's got your little sun with a one in there as your light fashion nice. rating one. So all that information that you want to have that's awesome. is right up there. So yes, yeah, no more right. searching for no, read, um, write things That's down, fantastic. experiment, have fun in the process, and um, I think you'll have a, a good time with this. Any other questions before we... The last one I have yeah. is, how does it perform versus the ultra matte gel? Versus the ultra matte gel. So, it's... it's it's more of a dead matte finish. Here's the thing, you're gonna, you're gonna get the matte finish with the ultra matte gel, you're also going to be adding thickness mm -hmm. to the paint. You're going to lose the fluid nature of the paint. Um, you're going to have to add something else in to try to get there. So that goes back to our original well, statement. Anytime you're adding anything to these two, you're losing some opacity. You're losing some opacity to it as well when you're adding mediums, right? You're going to change even, the even color. Even if it's matte, it right. doesn't matter. You're still yeah. thinning down the pigment. Yeah, and you're going to change the color of mm -hmm. it too, the yes. intensity of the color. Yes. So right out of the tube, if you're looking matte, right out of the, the, the right. bottle, Go for this right out of the bottle, uh, rather than mixing in right. the matte gel. But again, if if you wanted to keep some of the matte nature of this, but build up more thick, I don't know. Did I grab? I grabbed gloss there. I don't. Have <laughs> matte, I don't even have uh -huh. matte gel with me. But add in the matte gel by all means. Do that. Mm -hmm. But this has got a beautiful dead matte finish. And again, you're you're starting. This was kind of thick where it's where it's wet there. Still, yeah. you see that. But you're you're getting dry. Right. Uh, you're getting that that dead matte sheen mm -hmm. there uh, already where that's starting to happen and once again with our skateboard um, you get that yeah, too. Yeah, that's, that's the easiest way to see it really yeah, is to see, see that the, sheen of the, of the, the sheen wood. of the shellac on it. And yeah, yeah. Which which also by the way too, I, I just kind of taped this out with masking tape and I and I, I put the paint on there mm -hmm. um, which was really harder to do because I was putting it on a slick surface. Yes. Um, if I was doing something like this I would sand this down. Right. Uh, you know, I tape off if I wanted this to stay right, glossy. Right. Tape this off. Mm -hmm. I'd sand off, and then I might use um, Liquitex clear gesso, um, so I'd still see the clear. Uh, you know, if I want to see the wood there, uh, but I, but I could get the tooth uh, right. that it would grab to more. Yeah. Yeah, that clear gesso is. Yeah. The bomb. That's a cool. One. Literally one of my probably one of the things I use the most out of anything in yeah. my studio. Yeah. It's it's a fun one for mixed media work, so it's yeah. def definitely. I love to gesso over a drawing and then have that showing through and then yeah. the paint another question up. yeah how is this function on stone i on imagine it has a lot to do with the texture of the surface of yeah the yeah yeah st uh, st absolutely if it's a, if it's a porous dry surface uh and it's not dirty uh it should hold really well acrylics love something like that if if we're talking about the surface that's like a slick um granite countertop that's a, I, I, from having that's a different been a stone carver in college mm. I am gonna say that <laughs> she's like it was the face. It was the uh oh face, wasn't it? I'm yeah. sorry, it was an uh oh face. There are, um, I mean, gases. And there's things like sulfur and things like that in stone. Find out whatever mm. type of stone you have. If there's anything in it that could potentially discolor, uh, especially go. if you're gonna work thin in yeah. paint, you may need something as a barrier. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they're probably talking about the trend of. 
the painting and hiding the rock when you paint them and then right they which that's not that big of a deal but like if you're doing something on like a, a piece of cut stone right. that's raw that's not been sealed it's yeah. always it's always better if you're doing something that's like a fine art artwork for it not something like that that's well yeah a, what it, what is a the... fun trend where where, where what do you What's the expectation of where this work is going to live? Right, right, in right. In its afterlife. Yeah. Definitely, you need to learn something about. Yeah, this yeah. Is this just... is this a little? You know, is this a project? Yes. At the, at the middle school where it's not intended. Yeah, to last I'm all always. Time? I always take it literally as this is something for you know. Yeah. Well, that I, needs I think to last. I think with any paint too, it's, you can, I, I always go back to the basis of house paint because everybody has yes. experience with that. You know, you want that house paint to adhere to something. What does it always say? Make sure your surface is is clean, clean and it's, dry. It's right, dry. dry free from dirt, dust, yeah. debris, oil, uh, oil, yeah. oil mm -hmm. anything else like that as well. Right. Um, and you're going to have a better, better surface. Right. But it goes back to what, what you're saying right there. It goes back to e experiment and, and know what it yes. is that you're yes. doing. Write those things down. Yep. Yeah, as well. Cool. Anything else, ladies? Not in regards to this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, if you were playing along at home, JL85 is what you'd put in the search bar. If you want to pull up these products and see some of the things that Jimmy's featured on here, if you saw something on there, even if it's just uh, one of the mediums that he showed and you're like, I need that yeah, in my studio. Yes, definitely. I mean, the, the only thing I think we don't have on there is the palette wetting spray, and that's easy enough to find in a search. Um, and thank you. This was yeah, very, absolutely. very uh, educational. Good. It was useful. I think this is a great way to kind of start the product out with a bang. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, on it's our fun. website, it was really awesome. And thank you for. Yeah. You've been here two times this year. Uh, and, yeah, and three times total. Yeah, yeah. yeah awesome. you, And you finished out last year for us as well. I did. This the, is so this is the last one. This again? is the last episode of the year. So right. yeah, it's right. going to be awesome. now. Now you have to do it next year awesome. too. That's cool. So cool. Fun. You're going to have to come up with something. All right. <laughs> so uh, so that's it, guys, and. Uh, if you are not a member of our Jerry's Live Facebook group and you would like to be, go to uh, groups on Facebook, put in Jerry's Live, that'll pop up. You have to answer the question for one of the three ladies to approve you being in the group. It's just to make sure it's not, you know, harvesting names or whatever, you're a robot, something like that. But uh, you do have to do that to join the group. We've got a whole bunch of people in it. What do you know, know ladies what the number's up to now? It's a very active group. They're sh they're sharing artwork all the time. They're sharing commissions. Oh, they're good. sharing, uh, you know, just starting out, asking for critiques. Everybody's mm -hmm. been really kind, really nice. There have been no haters in this. Yeah, group. it's good to have a community. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's a crazy awesome community. So uh, definitely, that'll give you kind of something to do while you're waiting December out until we're back January. We will be back January eighth because I don't think anybody is going to be in the appropriate mindset or frame to, to do yeah, a show on, on January 1st. None of us. So, uh, so would be a very good show. Yeah, no, definitely not. So we'll be back January 8th. Um, I think we, we have a lot of just kind of tech questions that I've had over the years. Mm. Um, I used to do be the, the tech rep for you know, how-to questions sure. back in customer service. You know, back in the day, doing this job, I get people to ask me questions all the time about how to use this, that, or the other thing. Um, I think we talked about maybe, I remember Will, didn't we talk about maybe doing some little short video things where we just chat and talk about a topic? Mm. I think instead of doing that and posting them online, we'll do that in the Jerry's Live group. And once a week in December, um, I will just do whether, whether I get crew to help me or not, I will post something live. Uh, even if I have to film it myself, just to discuss one of the topics that I get a lot of questions about um, and just kind of give some knowledge, just to kind of keep people on their toes and keep them remembering that we're still here. Yeah, a little frequently asked yes. questions. Yes, yeah, yeah, because good. you get them and, it's, and it doesn't matter how many times you answer them. Yeah. It, they always still come up because somebody didn't hear. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so sure. that's something that I think I'm going to do just for December to kind of keep everybody on their toes in the group. Um, and... You can go to our page on uh, jerrysrm.com, type in Jerry's Live, scroll to the bottom of that page. It's got the sign up to go ahead and get you uh, the reminder to remember to come back on January 8th. I have uh, Brian and Marketing put that on there so people can go ahead and get that on their calendars nice. so they don't forget because yeah. everybody gets busy 
and hopefully it's busy in the studio. Yeah. So cool. Well, thanks guys for tuning yeah. in. Thank you, Jimmy, Absolutely. for being here. It was awesome. Yeah. And and now we can tease you relentlessly when we're yeah. off about your wife watching there we go. You on, your, <laughs> on your toes. I think that's fantastic. Will, it's kind of like you too. That always happens to Will anytime okay, he's yeah. on the show. So I know. So that's why he's over there grinning like, there <laughs> it's not just me. Good. Good. <laughs> thanks guys for Great. tuning in. Happy New Year. Happy Take New care. Year. We All will right. see you in January. Bye-bye.